What's up guys and welcome back to the Emacs YouTube channel and in today's video we're going to be going over our new E8 transmitter and I just want to make a dedicated video about this transmitter right here because there are a couple of functions that this one has that our old transmitter does not. So let's go ahead and hop right into the video. Now the first thing I want to talk about is obviously the design of this transmitter. It's completely redesigned from the ground up. So we have the full size gimbals in here, it's got more of the square shape and as you can see, and we went from a E6 transmitter, which was our six channel transmitter, to an E8 transmitter, which is now an eight channel transmitter. So it gives you a little bit more options, a little bit more flexibility with that extra couple of channels there. Now, the first thing we're gonna talk about is that this transmitter can run D8 or D16 mode. And there is a manual online, you can go to the knowledge base where you can find all of our web knowledge stuff like tech tips, manuals, and things of that nature. And you can go under the Tiny Hawk 3 category and there's an actual separate manual for the EA transmitter. And in there, in the EA transmitter, it's gonna tell you how you get into either D8 or D16 mode. Now, depending on what receiver protocol you're gonna use is depending on which one you're gonna put it in. Uh, they do come in the D8 mode, so if you're using any D8, you should be fine, be able to bind right out of the box. If you want to go to the D16, you're going to actually hit the L2 button, and then you're going to turn on the transmitter. And as you do that, you'll notice the transmitter will make that double beep sound and the light on your transmitter up top will be green. This is indicating that you're in D16 mode. Now, if I want to go back into D8 mode, I'm going to power off the transmitter. I'm going to hold the L1 button, which is your left trim up, and you're going to power on the transmitter. You'll hear the double beep again, but you can notice up at the top, the little red indicator light here telling you that you're in D8 mode. Now, there is one last mode, which is D16 LBT, and if you want to get into that mode, you're going to hold the L4 button and power on the transmitter, you'll get that double beep again, and then your light will turn to yellow up there. But now let's just go ahead and turn it back to D8 mode. Now, other than that, uh, another cool thing about this transmitter is if you look on the bottom of the transmitter, you'll see two ports. You have a little circular like aux cable looking port and you have the other micro USB slot here. And for the aux looking cable part right there, that's gonna be if you wanna set this up as a trainer remote. So if you have an experienced pilot with somebody's first time flying or a beginner, you'll be able to link the two transmitters together and have like a trainer system. So that way when the beginner remote or the beginner pilot has trouble, the trainer, the master remote can take over. And moving on to the USB port right here, this is not only for charging the standard 18650 that comes installed in the transmitter, but it's also for you to hook up to the computer and play some of those simulators you might have before going out and trying your new drone. Now, plugging in the transmitter, it should auto sense it as a USB joystick, but if it does not and you're having trouble, uh, there are a couple of things you need to do on the computer. So let me go ahead and hop onto my computer right now and show you the things I had to do to make sure that your Emacs transmitter is working properly as a USB joystick device. All right guys, up here in my streaming setup room right here, as you can see with the wallpaper behind me, uh, we're gonna go ahead and plug in our EA transmitter into our computer and see if it auto senses it or if we gotta go in and go ahead and change some settings. And I wanna give a shout out to one of our reviewers and his name is Albert Kim, and he's the one that actually pointed this out to us that some of our transmitters were not auto sensing for the simulator. Uh, so I just wanna go through it, make sure that we're connected and we're getting it working with the simulator. And if we run into any trouble, you guys can follow along with me and get yours working as well. So the first thing you wanna do is power on the transmitter, which I already did, and then get yourself a USB cable that's data transfer. You could plug into the uh, computer and get it running. Um, the one that comes with the kit should be data transfer, but if you're having trouble with it, uh, make sure to try a second cable, find one that you know works with your phone or something of that nature and plug it in. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and plug it in and 
Normally you would hear a sound from Windows saying that something was plugged in, but we didn't hear that sound. So the first thing I want to check, and I'm doing it a little backwards order than Albert Kim did, I'm going to check settings first and we're going to see if it even pops up in my settings. So we're going to go to settings, we're going to go to devices, and then after we're in devices, we're going to scroll down and we're going to look. And it seems to be that this one already auto-sensed and it is working. It has the Emacs joystick. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up DCL the game, which is a simulator out there that you can get for drone racing. And we're going to go here to the settings and we're going to go under controls and see if it's working. At the moment it's not. So we're going to calibrate our transmitter, which it looks to be roll throttles working, roll is working, but everything's a little backwards. So my throttles, right? Yaw is on the right stick. Roll is actually our pitch stick and yaw is pitch. So we got to change these around a little bit. So actually let's do AETR and boom. That's good. Now let's go in here. We'll real quick fly a track and make sure everything's working properly. So it looks like everything, we are working good. My settings are a little messed up. It's a little slow, but everything seems to be working. So let's exit out of the simulator real quick. You're probably asking, Matt, what if my transmitter doesn't auto sense when I plug it into the computer? Well, what you're gonna wanna do is go into device manager and under the device manager, you'll go to the universal serial bus controllers. And under here, you'll actually have one that looks a little bit different. It might say something like better USB with some numbers after it. And you're gonna wanna go in there, right click it and update the driver. So let's say we just randomly pick one here and we'll say this one. If you right click it, you can go to update drivers and once you're into update drivers, you're gonna to wanna to go to browse computer for driver software. And then you're gonna to wanna to go, let me pick from a list of available drivers. Once you're in here, you'll be able to pick USB device or whatever it may be. And you're gonna to wanna to pick the USB device. It might give you a couple of different options to choose from. So make sure you do USB device, then hit next, it'll update the drivers for you. And then you'll be able to go back into that settings menu I showed you in the beginning and make sure it pops up as Emacs joystick. And then when you go to your simulators, obviously you'll have to calibrate the controller for each simulator that you play, but it'll be at least sensing it within the computer. And that's what we're looking for here. Now, a couple of other things to make note of this transmitter. At the top here, it does have an opening where you pull this little rubber back. And that's if you have the transporter two goggles, you can actually take the monitor from that and install it into this transmitter. So you have your monitor and the transmitter in kind of all in one uh, situation here, kind of if you're coming from DJI or other companies like that, where you're used to the transmitter and a screen on it, uh, you can do that with this transmitter as well. Now, one other thing I do want to make note of on this transmitter right here, we put it inside the manual. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do it because it's kind of involved, but our, if you are a little bit more experienced or if you have a hobby shop or a local friend that's willing to help you, you can actually open this up if you're one of those people that like the throttle on the right stick instead of the left stick. You can go ahead and move that around so you'll have the throttle on the right stick. I'm, I'm more of a mode two pilot, so I like it in the configuration that it comes and a majority of you guys out there are mode two pilots as well with the throttle on the left. But there were a couple of people that asked us in the past, uh, do our transmitters work with other modes such as like mode three and the throttle on the right. Um, so you can do that with this transmitter. Uh, just be very careful opening up the product and switching things around. Like I said, it's in the manual. So I just wanted to make note of it. 
But other than that, that's pretty much it for our new E8 transmitter. Hopefully you guys like it. Hopefully you like the design. I know I like the full size gimbals for a beginner transmitter. That's really important to me. And I like the fact that you can plug it into a simulator and you can play on the simulator before you go out and you crash your drone or anything of that nature. Those are the two big upgrades that I see fit for me on this transmitter. Definitely go down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about this. What's the best new feature that you like? Is it that it's an A channel? Is it that you can switch from D16 to D8? Or is it the simulator function like I said? But just let us know down in the comments and until the next video guys, I'll see you later.